Hello, beautiful people of the internet. Uh, how are you all? Give me a thumbs up to let me know you are doing good today. So right up front, I want to warn you guys that this is probably not going to be the most cheerful of videos uh, because last week I lost someone who has been a big inspiration to me and I want to talk about him and his story. I did a post on this on my food blog, which if you're interested, I'll link it below, but I wanted to do this here as well because this particular person was a very big believer in the power of social media. I want to get his story out to as many people as possible, so that's why I'm doing this here as well. So the person I'm talking about is a chef by the name of Homaro Cantu, who died last Tuesday. Um, he is basically the reason that I started my food blog. My food blog is a huge part of my life right now. It's more than a hobby. It's actually become sort of a second job. It's um, adding to my income. It's adding to my social media presence, which ultimately helps me to my main goal of becoming a fiction writer. So first, I want to tell you guys a little bit about this man and what made him such an incredible human being. Um, he is mainly known as the chef at a restaurant here in Chicago called Modo, which specializes in molecular gastronomy, which is a type of cooking that uses advanced scientific techniques to manipulate food in ways that have never been thought of before. It's generally a very artistic way of presenting food, and it sort of is theatrical and uh, mind-bending. It's a really excellent experience if you ever get the chance to go to a molecular gastronomy restaurant, especially if you get the chance to go to Modo. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Beyond being a chef, he was also an inventor. He was working with NASA on some major technologies. You know in Star Trek The Next Generation how they have those the things... Oh, I'm losing nerd points right now. So they have the the box where you can pretty much order anything you want and it just pops up in that box. He had a technology that was very similar to that. A printer that would print off edible paper that he could print images on with edible ink and then flavor those images to taste like anything he wanted. So there was one dish that Moto did that was called the sushi course and it was a picture of a sushi roll next to the actual sushi roll that it was a picture of. But those technologies that he was helping to pioneer and to invent and perfect were being put to use outside of just gimmicky food stuff. He was championing these things called miracle berries, is they make anything that is bitter or sour or acidic taste sweet. You can get them off of Amazon. Um, if you just search Miracle Berry on Amazon, they should pop up. This in particular is the company he worked with, M Berry, and uh, these are what they look like. They just look like little pills, but what you do is let this dissolve on your tongue and it changes the way your taste buds detect flavors. He actually wrote an entire cookbook called the Miracle Berry Diet Cookbook. It's an amazingly comprehensive collection of recipes that are all meant to be eaten with the Miracle Berry. It's not stuff where you're throwing chemicals into a vat and throwing liquid nitrogen at it. It's not that. It's regular home-cooked recipes, but changed to take out the refined sugar and replace it with the power of the Miracle Berry. That again sounds very gimmicky, but it is put to a lot of practical use. There are a lot of edible plants in this world that are very nutritious, but that we don't eat because they're not palatable. They don't taste good. So by consuming a miracle berry and then eating some of these plants that are perfectly nutritious, they then become palatable and we can then feed them to people who need them. And that was just one of the things that he was trying to do with the Miracle Berries. The other thing was to eliminate diabetes. He was an incredibly generous man um, who was a mentor to his staff. His, there's been a lot of amazing chefs who have come out of the kitchens at Modo and at his former restaurant, Ng who have gone on to really great things. Um, there have been Top Chef contestants, there have been people who have opened their own restaurants, there are people who are working to do things like develop vegan eggs to that taste just like regular eggs but that you can also bake with and cook with and have them 
act like a normal egg. So as for how he affected my life, I want to start off by saying that I'm not trying to appropriate the sadness and the grief of his friends and family uh, for my own purposes. I want to be upfront and clear that I did not know him on a very personal level. I had met him on a number of occasions. Most of my interactions with him were online, which I think makes his generosity towards me even more remarkable. So back in 2009, I was working at Second City and I didn't have a lot of money, but uh, my friend Miranda and I, neither of us are native to Chicago. We like to take our nights off from Second City to explore Chicago and get to know the city a little bit better. One night we decided that we would go to Moto because we had heard that they had a lounge area where you could get a drink and then maybe try one or two of the dishes. The dinners at Moto are unfortunately a little bit expensive because a lot of the technologies involved are very expensive, so it's understandable. So we decided that we would try and go for a drink just so we could say we had gone. And I think that the bartender there was just amused to see these two rubes, for lack of a better word, show up at his bar. And there was nothing else going on for him that night other than making drinks for the tables, so he entertained us. He sat there and chatted with us, was incredibly nice to us, gave us a, a taste of European gin so we could see how herbally it was. He gave us these little shots of absinthe with uh, blue carousel in a test tube, which was silly but so much fun. And before we left, um, one of the chefs came up from the kitchen and said that we couldn't leave without at least trying some of the food. So he had brought us up this little dessert, which they called the chocolate bomb. And it just looked like a little chocolate truffle, but it had a marshmallow wick sticking out of it. So it was like a little bomb with a wick. They lit the wick on fire and it burned all the way down. And then we popped the chocolate into our mouths and inside was a liquefied graham cracker center. So it was like a s'more. They did all of that for us with us only buying one drink each. A little bit later on, I decided to send a tweet to Homaro Cantu thanking him for having such an amazing staff. And in that tweet, I did mention that I could never hope to afford dinner at Moto, but that that didn't matter to his staff. They still treated us like queens when we went there. And that meant a lot to me because I'd never had that kind of experience at a restaurant before. Almost immediately after me sending that tweet to him, he DM'd me, inviting me to come to dinner at Moto on him. And I was so elated. I had to take a break and go call my mom because I couldn't believe that that, that was being offered to me. I actually felt so lucky that day that I went and bought a lottery ticket because I, I just couldn't, I was like, there's some lucky star happening right now that I need to take advantage of. Needless to say, I did not win the lottery, but in a way I did. I took Miranda to Moto for dinner, and um, at that time they had two options. They had a 20 course dinner and a 10 course dinner, and when we got there they informed us that uh, they would be giving us the 10 course dinner with wine pairings. We actually ended up with, I think, a 13 course dinner by the end of it because they slipped us a couple of extra courses that they wanted us to try because we were nerding out so much. And at the end of it, they took us all around the restaurant, they showed us the lab downstairs, they showed us into the kitchens, and we got to meet Richie Farina, who would eventually become uh, not only a contestant on Top Chef, but also the executive chef at Moto. This was essentially a $400 meal that got given to us for free. And we were barely making ends meet at that time. I had worn a $25 dress that I put on a credit card that I got from Target, especially for that night. And I had eaten nothing but egg noodles and frozen vegetables for a week so that I could save up enough money to leave for tip. That's how tight my budget was at that time. So the fact that they not only invited us in to experience it, but also how kind they were to us the entire process just deeply, deeply, deeply touched me. The only thing that Homaro asked from me in return was that I talk about the experience on social media, which I gladly did. My phone was very low tech at that time, but I attempted to do a sort of live tweet thing and my friends and family got involved commenting on the pictures and that was the first time I'd ever done anything like that. 
Uh, the pictures are very low quality, so I probably will not insert them in this video because you won't be able to experience the full majesty that was that dinner, but it so deeply affected me that I actually still have that menu. I have kept this on my desk uh, since that day in 2010. I probably will never get rid of it. That dinner was what eventually led Miranda and I to start our food blog. We knew there was so much more out there to discover in Chicago's culinary scene, and we were both I don't want to use the term foodies, but we were both very interested in food and going to different restaurants. So we eventually decided on going to brunch every Sunday because brunch tends to be a little bit cheaper than going out for dinner. And that way we could experience some of the better restaurants in Chicago without blowing our entire budgets on one meal. Because we both had sort of boring day jobs by that point, we were looking for something to do creatively. And I was a writer, she was a photographer, so it only made sense that we would start a food blog. It's been over four years since I started that blog, and I've kept up with it, and it's one of the few long-term projects in my life that I've been able to maintain and it has been such an amazing blessing. When I first moved to Chicago, I went through a lot of emotional stuff. Um, I had a long time getting used to being in a new city, finding new friends, and um, maintaining a job. And one of the things that helped me through that was this food blog. It gave me a chance to express my creative voice, to keep myself on a deadline, and to keep my brain working in a creative way. It has brought me an amazing amount of joy that I never thought I could get from just writing about brunch. That it never would have happened without the generosity of Homaro Cantu. Over the years, he was really supportive of my blog. He helped me get it out there to people by posting the links, by communicating with me through social media. And he even invited me back for a couple of events um, at the Ing Sister restaurant. He invited me for another dinner there. He invited me once to come and guest chef in the kitchens at Ing, which was an amazing experience. I only met the man two, maybe three times in person. And I was always kind of terrified to talk to him. I don't even know for sure if he knew who I was in person in relation to the person he spoke with on social media. We were definitely communicative on social media, especially through Twitter and Facebook, because um, that was the kind of guy he was. He wanted to interact with his fans. He wanted to get his messages out there. And the outpouring that has happened through social media after his passing has proven how successful he was at doing that. He had just opened up a Miracle Berry themed cafe called Berista, which if you're in Chicago, I implore you to go check it out. It's an amazing, amazing establishment. It's something that you will never see anywhere else. There's sandwiches and there's coffees and there's pastries and a lot of them use the Miracle Berry to enhance their flavor. He was due to open up a brewery this summer, I think, um, called Crooked Fork. And unfortunately, it looks like that most likely will not happen, which is um, one of the bigger tragedies, along with the fact that he leaves behind two beautiful little girls. Um, I don't want to get in to his death <laughs> too much, because again, I, it, it's not my place my place is to talk about how he inspired me, and that's what I want to get across here. But um, he did commit suicide um, inside of his brewery that was supposed to open. Um, and that to me is absolutely devastating, that this kind, generous, intelligent man couldn't find a reason to keep going. And if there's one message I want to get across to everybody watching this, if there, if there is anybody watching this, it's that you never know how influential you are to other people. Even if you feel like you're not accomplishing what you have set out to accomplish, you could have inspired someone else to go out and accomplish what they've been trying to accomplish. And 
ultimately that is what we should be striving for. People shouldn't be striving to be famous for fame's sake. They should be striving to make the world better. And if you don't have the resources to be able to do that yourself, if as long as you have the passion and you keep pushing, you will inspire someone who does have those resources and who can make those things happen. So never think that you haven't influenced someone else. If you are feeling unloved, you're wrong. There is someone out there who has felt your presence, who has felt your passion, and who is making headway and only needs your inspiration to spark them further. There is no measuring how much you can inspire someone else with a simple act of kindness. This is something I was going to get into in another video and I probably will, but there is no weakness in being a kind and generous person. There's a difference between being kind and generous and being naive. And being naive will get you taken advantage of. But being kind and generous costs you nothing and can bring so much to someone else's life that you have no idea. You have no idea how it could affect someone. So if anything else comes out of this video, I hope that I can inspire someone to go out there and do something kind for someone else because you never know how much that one little act of kindness, that one little hug, that one little flower can affect someone else and can bring them out of a dark place or bring them out of a moment of hopelessness. Sorry if this got a little deep for you guys. Um, I hopefully will be back with something a little bit more cheerful next week, but until then, I hope all of you take care and um, go home and hug somebody. Even if it's a stranger, just hug somebody. Bye.